So today we're going to start looking at surfaces. In ARCHICAD, this name has changed a little bit before. We might talk about texture, and that's still important, but the name that we will use when we're talking about something that's applied to the surface in terms of a material, there is such thing as a building material as well in ARCHICAD, and that complicates it further, but the 3D representation and in terms of creating 3D visualization, that's what we're talking about. The 3D representation is called a surface. Now, when we come to create surfaces, we create it through a few different engines. We can either use the basic engine. Trim this down a bit. Or we use one. or we use the OpenGL engine, or we use the Cine Render by Maxon Engine. Now, if we're trying to create photo renders, we're definitely going to use the Cine, Ender, Cine Render engine to create the photo render, but it's quite complex. There's quite a lot involved in creating these settings and adjusting these settings. So if you're new to surfaces, I'm gonna show you a a better way, a simpler way, would be a better way to say that, a simpler way to create these using the basic engine. Another reason to use the basic engine or the OpenGL engine is because when you're viewing it, not in the photo rendered option, but just in this view, this is generally the OpenGL. And we could also be using it in the basic engine. And we want our model to represent in all of these. We want it to represent like we want to see it in our basic, in our OpenGL, and in our Cine Render Engine. And it's important, therefore, that we update it so all of these are simultaneously visible. So this is the surfaces. Uh, let's just talk about the basic for now. So we have transparency, transmittance, attenuation. This allows us to make it transparent. The attenuation, if we add some transparency or a fair bit of transparency and then attenuation gives us a variation of transparency. The idea of if you're looking through maybe a glass bottle at the edge, it looks thicker at the edge so it distorts the transparency, it's less transparent. So the more attenuation we add, the more we see that's the case. So it's uh, clearer in the middle and more solid, more opaque on the edges as we're looking at a sphere. The emission attenuation is the amount of this basic color that comes through, and that really affects it in terms of its light. So if we're talking about does it get light, does it become illuminated, or is it really dark as a surface when there is not much illumination, the attenuation and the emission color has a big impact on that. The reflection, the ambient diffuse, are ways of understanding light. And if we add the ambient light up very high and the diffuse light very low, what we see is it becomes fake looking. It's not real light. If we have the ambient really low and the diffuse really high, we see that it's more realistic but very dull. So we have very dark edges and not really anything very light. Uh, but we see that there is light on this surface. So if we add a bit of both, then that still gives us darker surfaces and it gives us lighter surfaces. Is it real? Not really, uh, but um, it depends on how well we're bouncing light in our model. And the shininess and glowing, obviously the shiny makes it shiny. And you're not going to see that very well in this basic engine. We can increase that quite a lot, and then we're going to see this little mark on the edge. So we can see that there's glowing there. But if we were then to have these both quite high, shininess and glowing, and then we will go to our Cine Render engine, and we were to say Match Settings, Update Cine Render Settings from Basic, meaning we've created it in Basics, Basic, and we're updating in the Cine Render. Press OK then we'll see that our surface becomes very, very shiny, very, very mirroring. So we need to be aware of the impact that we're having from the basic into the Sydney Render engine. I don't want to do that at the moment, so let's press cancel. Now I've set this up 
a little slab and some walls. So we're going to use this as a scene in order to be able to understand surfaces and also to be able to create surfaces. So this is just a, a slab that's four by four meters and walls that are four meters high and 2.7 meters high, meaning that we're sort of representing the internal space of maybe a bedroom. And that's hopefully going to give us a realistic understanding of the scale of the materials that we're trying to create. There'll be some variation of that later, but I'll, I'll get into that later. All right, so a little bit about surfaces. If we're using the basic engine, what else are we looking at? So we've got the exposure to light. We have vectorial hatching, which means what does it look like in 2D? So that would be 2D elevation or 2D section, or it could even be 2D in 3D if we're using, if we're showing vectorial hatching using a basic engine or using a 3D document. And then finally we have texture. And what's texture? Texture is the image. It's in this case a JPEG. And of everything in ArchiCAD, it's probably the textures that are the most primitive that come standard straight out of the box. And if you're going to update anything in the surfaces, you'd probably start with creating or sourcing better textures to make better surfaces. What are they? That is effectively images, images that you might have downloaded, images you might have bought, images that you might have edited and created yourself possibly. And the size of the image isn't necessarily important, meaning the pixels, if it's too large in terms of file size, it's going to make the model very slow and the render very slow. But if it's too small, Let's go to this one, for instance. If it's too small and doesn't have enough pixels, the more we zoom in, the more we see it becomes pixelated. So we need to understand to what level of detail do we need to see? How closely am I going to be able to view this surface in my model? And therefore, how detailed does it need to be? And that's constantly a battle when we're creating surfaces. We don't want it to be too large, too large a file size because that's going to slow down our model and we don't want it to be too small too few pixels because that's going to mean that we don't end up getting a very good visualization so we need to find a balance somewhere in between that balance is sometimes determined by how closely we see it so if I wanted a, a surface a texture to be patterned over this wall and repeated ten times then I'm not really zooming in very closely likely. If I need this surface pattern texture to be only repeated once, then I am seeing it in a great amount of detail and the quality of that needs to be much higher. All right. In the next video, we'll have a look at how to create and edit our surfaces. Hopefully that's useful in terms of a general understanding of how surfaces work and we'll build them up over time to create something that is unique, to create something that's high quality and still renders well without taking too long.